Welcome back to the Sticky Art channel. If you're new here, my name is Justin, and in this video, I'm going to show how to draw the human body using a pencil, paper, and a sketching technique. I'm also going to be using a reference of a woman in a somewhat stylized yet simple standing pose. The first thing I always do when drawing a person is sketch in a line that represents the overall angles or gesture of the figure. This helps break down the figure into simple lines and geometry and helps also kind of serve as a foundation to build the body on. Just like when building a house, if you have a really nice foundation, the house is going to build out a lot easier and going to last and be a lot nicer looking. So with this, I highly recommend taking a little bit of extra time to make sure that you have the pose correct before moving on to the next step. The gesture lines can also help in getting more accurate body proportions. Once I have my main gesture lines in, I'm going to come back in and add the head. I do this by adding just a circle on the top part and then kind of an angular half circle on the bottom for the jaw. To check now the proportions, a good size for the head is about one eighth of the whole body. So the whole body should have a total of eight heads. And this one was a little too big, so I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit smaller and then recheck my proportions. One, two, three, Four, down to the bottom of the pelvis, one, two, three, four, and that is down to the bottom of the feet, so a total of eight heads. Next, I'm going to put some guidelines in for the face. This first one is directly down the middle of the sphere, but it is angled down because the face is looking somewhat down, and this line is going to be a guide for where the brow line is, as well as on the side of the face. You can see I made that smaller oval, and that's kind of where I'm going to carve off a little bit of the head, since the sides of our head are flat there. Once I have the chin in, and then I can pull it back up from the center and then also connect right here where the center line going up and down on the smaller circle on the side of the head is. This is where one of the main muscles that connects from the bottom of the ear and the jawline down to the center part of the neck. Once the head is in and I have a general idea of how wide it is, I'm gonna use that to add in the shoulders. And the shoulders tend to be about two and a half heads wide. And keep in mind that these proportions are just an average for the regular adult body. Everybody's body is going to be a little bit different, so it's really important when you're using a picture or to try and make it look like somebody, use the reference and go off of their own specific proportions. So if they have a longer abdomen, longer legs, or wider shoulders, you can reflect that in the drawing. Another important proportion is going to be the midway point. So from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet, the middle of that is going to be the bottom of the pelvic bone. And on women, it actually typically tends to be a little bit higher. And on men, it's right at that middle point. Now that I have the shoulders and rest of the guidelines in place, I'm going to use them as a reference to kind of rough in where the rib cage is. And another helpful reference that I use is the bottom of the rib cage is going to be right at where the elbow meets if the arm is straight down. Next, I'm going to connect the neck to the center part of the chest, like I mentioned earlier. And this goes on both sides. So I'm gonna draw this up, and this is gonna help me draw my neckline. The lines on each side of the neck come down and meet in the middle to form a V. This is also where the collarbones are going to be. And if you were to measure down from the bottom of the chin, it's about half a head length down. Once I have the neck in place, I'm gonna connect it to the shoulders. Next, I'm gonna draw in the upper arm and the forearm. And a lot of these, I'm just kind of just getting in the generic shape of it, looking at the reference. And most of them are just kind of elongated circles or ovals. And I like to hold off on drawing any details of the hand until the whole body is in, just in case I have to move anything around. Now that I have the arm and the hand in place, I'm gonna put in my abdomen and the rest of the rib cage. I'm going to do this just by adding a circle kind of at the base or middle of here and shaping it out and connecting it to the rib cage. And then it's going to connect down into a triangle type shape. And this is going to be for the pelvis. And I'm going to connect the long parts of the legs or the femurs to the pelvic area on each side. On each leg, there's going to be a long muscle that runs on the outer side where it connects from the long part of the bone where the pelvic area is all the way down to the knee. And this is the muscle that makes up most of the shape of our hip. So I put in the upper part, but to put in the bottom part and connect everything, I'm going to have to draw in the kneecap. And to figure out where the knee is, 
I'm actually just going to measure the halfway point from the very top of the hips all the way down to the bottom of the foot. And that middle point is going to be where the knee should be. Now that I have the outside part of the leg connected from the hip all the way down to the knee, I'm going to connect the inside part. And there's another set of long muscles that are going to be connecting the knee to the inner part of the upper leg. And it's really important just to make sure that it tapers typically downwards and is a little bit smaller on the bottom part of the leg than the top. But overall, it's a long oval shape. And now I'm going to draw in the calf. And the calves tend to be somewhat oval-like, but a little bit almost triangular in the way that they taper down as well. And since the reference is wearing shoes, I'm not going to draw feet. I'm just going to block in the general shapes of the shoes for right now. I'm going to come in with the other side of the calf, and it's another kind of semi-oval shape that tapers downwards. And I'm going to just come in and clean up the rest of the lines. And once I have most of the body parts in, it's a lot easier to come back in and see what other parts need to be adjusted. So I'm going to add in this left arm, as well as the hand that is up on the hip. And clean up some of the lines. This also helps to see when comparing one part of the body to the other, like looking at the head and going straight down, just to see what else should be in that line. And it also allows me to kind of get some of the areas where it needs to be a little bit wider. It also helps to kind of go through and make sure all the joints are where they should be and everything kind of lines up. So I'm just going through and doing some last minute checks. This is pretty much the last time to make some really big adjustments before moving on to the next step of rendering the actual picture out to make it look like a really nice picture. And I'm putting in the pelvic area and making sure that there's a Y there. This guideline will help when coming back and drawing on the clothes. One of the last things I'm going to come in and add for the parts of the body is always going to be the hands. Just because they are the most detailed and they have a lot of different pieces, I'm going to block them in first, just the general shape, just so I have some angles to work with. And then I'm going to come back in with some more detailed lines. But the hands and pretty much any other detailed part, the trick to all of them is just refining it and always working from general to specific. So making so you have that general shape and then coming in and honing in on the details. And once the main parts of the body are in, it's a lot easier to see if there's anything that is off or that needs to be adjusted. And I'm going to do my last adjustments before moving forward with shading everything. Putting in a few more reference lines and just cleaning up some of the lines. And I went ahead and pushed out the right side of the hip and then cleaned up the neck area too. And you can kind of see that the center of the neck lines up with the right leg. The next step in the process is going to be to shade everything in. I'm just going to come in with the side of my pencil, holding it at a real side angle so I can get the broad side of the graphite. And it's always good to have the graphite or pencil sharpened while doing this. Makes it really easy to get a lot of coverage. And I'm just going in trying to get everything kind of covered, just so everything has a little bit of the graphite on it and making sure that the areas that are a little bit darker have a little bit more. So the legs and the arms, since they're round or somewhat of a round shape, are going to be darker on the sides and then lighter on the center part. And this is due to the lighting, but also due to the fact that they're round and it's sticking out towards us. And typically, lighted parts are going to be what sticks out. Next, I'm coming in with a blender stick. This is a really, really handy tool to have. If you don't have a blender stick, you can also use a paper towel rolled up. But it's just blending out the colors or the graphite into the paper. And this makes it so all of the paper has a little bit of the graphite on there and a lot easier to get everything covered. And then I can come back in with the dark tones and then also come back in with a eraser and get some of the highlights back. Once I have everything shaded in for the most part, I'm going to come back in and add some lines for the clothing. 
This is really easy to do just using the lines that I already have as a reference. And just remember that the clothing always sits on top of the body, so it's going to add some thickness. And once I have the main lines of the clothes in, I'm going to come back in with an eraser and pick up a lot of the areas where I want it to be lighter. And then with the pencil, just put in some more details. And one thing to keep in mind with loose hanging clothes like t-shirts is that the drapes are all affected by gravity, so it's going to pull things somewhat in a downwards motion. And with the hair, I'm just going to block everything in, blend it out, and then I'm going to come in and add some details. And with the face, I'm just using the blender that is a little bit dirty, but this is a really easy way that I can put in some reference points for where the lips, nose, and eyes are. And the eye is a really good reference point. It's going to be that it's about halfway down from the whole head. So if you go from top to bottom, the eyes typically fall right in the middle. And since this face is at such an angle, I'm using a lot of other things as references and trying to line everything up. Anytime a face is at an angle, which typically in most natural poses, it's going to be at some kind of an angle, it can be a challenge to get the proportions and everything right. But a lot of the detail work is just a matter of coming in and trying to get the angles and everything right and then coming back in and correcting things that are not right or that look off. Since this video is mainly about how to draw bodies, I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to draw the faces. But let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me make another tutorial that goes more into detail on the faces and how to draw them at different angles. The darkest parts are what's going to really stand out on the face and that's going to be the eyebrows, eyes, and lips. And I'm just going to put some lines in for where the glasses are. This will also help me kind of get placement for where my hand is going to go and for the final placement of the finger. And I'm just coming in with the blender and coming back between the blender and blending things out and then adding in back in highlights where they should be and then any other details with the pencil that are dark. And I'm just repeating the process of coming back in with a kneaded eraser. I find that the kneaded eraser works really well to pull up some of the highlights. And I'm using the blender pencil to come back in on the edges of the highlights where they meet the dark areas and just blend them out a little bit to make them so they're not so harsh. And then coming back in with a mechanical pencil as well as a standard 2HB pencil that is sharp to put in the details. That about wraps up my step-by-step -step how to draw a human body tutorial. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you do have any other questions, comments, or ideas for the channel, let me know in the comment section below. And if you do want to see more art and tutorials from me, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications for when I post my newest videos. And until next time, peace.